kids podcast. <laughs> you can go slow. A kids podcast about. Hello, my name is Ari, and I'm a producer for podcasts here at a kids company about. We're on a mission to empower a generation of kids through diverse storytelling. And we're doing this through podcasts like the one you're listening to right now. Check out all our books, podcasts, and classes by visiting akidsco.com. Camp Adventure. Camp is in your living room. Camp is in your car on the way to the store. Camp is under your blanket fort. Camp is everywhere. And Camp Adventure is for everyone, no matter where in the world you are. And Camp Kensler's Ben and Hannah are ready to welcome you. It's our second week at camp, and I am so excited to welcome you back. This week, we're talking about determination. Have you ever been playing a game, but felt like you wanted to quit? Or maybe you started a project, but wanted to give up? I definitely know what that's like. And Counselor Ben is going to tell us a story about having that feeling, and also about exploration, building a river raft, and determination. I'm Camp Counselor Ari, and it's another beautiful day at Camp Adventure. Let's say hello to Camp Counselor Ben to kick things off. Ari, thank you, thank you, and yes, this is Camp Counselor Ben, and we are back for week number two. I love being here with you kids, and I hope that you are enjoying this warm sunshine like I have been. It is wonderful. At my house, we have a birdhouse with a little chickadee family. The little babies are chirping every day, and we have two new baby kittens. Uh, Bear is the black one, and Grace is the gray one, and they are the cutest, cuddliest little kittens ever. So summertime is filled with new life, new adventures, and my goodness, it is so good to share it with you. Last week, we talked about being scared on the first day, and I told you a story about the time when all the kids were ignoring and making fun of me, except for one boy, Dan. He was kind to me, and his goodness made all the difference. So if you haven't heard that story yet, no problem. You can always go back and listen to the Scary Sneakers story from week one. But this week, we're going to be talking about determination. Make an explorer pose, you know, like a good explorer if you know what determination means. Shrug your shoulders and your arms if you don't know what determination means. That's okay. Uh Huh? Yes, just as I expected. Some of us have heard that word and others have not, and that is totally good. That's what stories are for, to help us learn. Determination, it's about not giving up. It's about being determined or being willing to finish the game or to complete your project, even when the work gets hard. That's what determination is. So I'm going to take you out during story time onto the Fox River, the one I talked about last week, filled with painted turtles and water snakes. And we're going to talk about determination, about a secret island and building a fire, about a raft and a waterfall. And it is a true story, but it is not quite story time yet. Sorry, I get excited about these things sometimes. So before we get to the stories, we have to meet with our music leader, Hannah, to sing our camp songs. And she's been playing her guitar and singing every day. And I know that she has been missing you since the last time. So Hannah is coming up next. And then, of course, we have to open the mailbag and see what you and the other kids have sent in to Camp Adventure. I wonder, did you make a camp flag for last week's challenge? I hope so. And if you've sent it to the mailbag, then everybody at Camp Adventure can check it out. We love your artwork so much, okay? So we're going to check the mailbag in a second. But right now, it is time for that magical moment where we all sing together. I love it. So without any further introduction, dun dun dun, dun please welcome our Camp Adventure music leader. She eats gummy bears for breakfast and never steps on the cracks in the sidewalk. The strong, the brave, the talented and creative camper of campers and my good friend, Hannah Glaver. Thanks, Ben. You are absolutely correct. I do eat a lot of gummy bears, especially the sour kind. Being with you for another week at Camp Adventure is the best. All right. 
I'm going to start this thing off by asking you to do something with me. And I've got a little something for our listeners who are tuning in inside and outside. It's important to get our blood flowing and our groove a going. So please join along if you are able. Now, if you're listening inside, I want you to raise both of your hands in the air. Now, hold it. Hold it right there. I'm sure it looks great. Okay, now if you're outside, I know it's not the easiest, and it might be a little booty propped up on the ground sort of scenario. Do whatever it takes, but let's try to stick both feet up in the air. Okay, so we have some hands in the air, and we also have some feet in the air. Now let's go ahead and wiggle those toes and fingers as fast as you can. Yes, yes, yes. Nice work. Nice work. And with that wiggle, let's give that foot and hand a little wave. Let's wave it a little bit to the left. Yeah, keep wiggling. Very nice, very nice. And now we're going to like wave it a little bit to the right. Great, great, great. And now we're going to reach out in front of you with that wiggle. Keep going. Good form, good form. Great. And now maybe give it a little crisscross. Yes, nice. Now I'm going to ask you to flap your arms and your legs like a chicken a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's great. And you're good. All right, fantastic, folks. Just fantastic. Now, before we get our little sing-sang on, we're going to warm up those pipes a little bit with a hearty camp cheer. And if you're listening with anybody else, grown-ups, friends, brothers, sisters, when I say three, I want you to shout out, Camp Adventure! As loud as you can. Okay? Here we go. One, two, two and a half. Three! Camp Adventure! Yes. All right, now that we are all warmed up, if you are able... Let's go ahead and stand up and stretch and wiggle a little bit and get ready to dance along. If you don't remember the words, no problem at all. Let's keep learning it together as we go. And as usual, please send me videos or pictures of the dances and wiggles and sounds that you make as we sing, okay? I can't wait to see and hear them. Maybe I'll post a video of my own one of these weeks. Who knows? Now this week, Camp Counselor Ben is going to share a little something about determination. And determination has a lot to do with adventure. Ahem. Have you ever tried to start a something, but it started to get tough? You didn't know if you could do it, and you thought you had enough. With good courage, we could do a good thing when life's leaving you perplexed. Oh yes, the secret to adventure is not knowing what comes next. Okay. Here comes the chorus. Let's sing this together. Adventure, we venture. Together with courage, we learn and grow strong. We learn from each other. So let's discover and uncover great adventures, bright and new. Oh, yeah. So good, friends. Awesome job. Now, this is only week two, and you are sounding great. Well, at least I think you're sounding great. There is only one way to find out, so send me your videos, any photos, so we can all hear and see you. And I can't wait to be with you next week, but for now, it is time for that very special moment that happens every single week at camp. Drum roll, please. It's our mailbag. Hi, everyone. I'm Camp Counselor Matthew, and I'm here with the mailbag. It's where I keep all the mail we receive for our campers. For those of you that listened last week, did you enjoy your time at camp? Did you set up a space of your own to listen along each week? Did you name your camp and make a flag? I cannot wait to see and hear all about it. Oh my word. More info on how to share in a minute. But first, I thought I'd give you a chance to meet a few more of our camp counselors. Hey campers, I'm camp counselor Denise and welcome to Camp Adventure. I remember having so much fun at camp growing up, and one of my favorite things to do was arts and crafts. I was always the first person at the craft table ready to make something new every day. But one of my favorite camp memories was when we went out into the woods with nothing but blankets and flashlights. Then we sat on the ground under a bed of stars and turned off all the lights and got to map out constellations. It was amazing. I can't wait to see what adventures we'll have this summer. Greetings, Earthlings. It is Camp Counselor Duke here just to say hi, hello, howdy. Um, apologies to any aliens out there. I sincerely did not know that you existed. Um, assumed y'all were from Earth. Uh, if you are an alien, please send your complaints to Matthew. 
And I'm already getting off on the wrong foot. Uh, I've already insulted all the aliens out there. Uh, I really want to check in to with you Earthlings because as a fellow Earthling, I have emotions. I get nervous in new places, uh, meeting new people, new activities. And that's what we're doing here. That's what summer camp's all about. We're still finding our people, finding our feet, getting comfortable and doing all these fun activities. So I'm going to give you three options. If you're kind of excited or maybe you're cautiously optimistic, uh, maybe your energy's a little low or kind of in the middle, you're going to hoot like a forest owl. Hoo, hoo, hoo. I'll tell you when to do it. Don't do it yet. Option number two is you are so excited. You're pumped about it. You are vibrating with excitement. You get five seconds to do your best vocal style guitar solo. Maybe you go do it outside, involve the neighbors. Maybe someone else is out there doing a vocal style guitar solo too, and you can have a vocal style guitar solo battle, socially distanced, of course. Camp adventure. Option three. You don't want to be here. Some grown up sat you down, told you to listen to this thing and do all the things and follow the instructions, but you're just kind of bummed. Here's what you get to do. You get to give your best raspberry. You know what a raspberry is? It's one of these. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, you get to give your best raspberry, but here's the rules. You only have one lung full of air to do it. You get one chance to breathe in and breathe out with your raspberry. But after that, you're done. No more complaining. That's it. All right. All right. Now I'm going to now you're going to do all the things. I'm going to count down from five rather fast. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. OK, OK. That was fun, right? Or not. Maybe. I don't know. That's all the craziness from Camp Counselor Duke. That's my name. Toodles. Well, you've just about met all of us camp counselors, and now it's our chance to get to meet you. We'd love to know about your camp experiences. And so to all of our camp adventure campers and families and friends, send us photos and videos and mail to listen at a kids podcast about dot com or on social media using hashtag AKBA summer. We'll share as many things as we can from our mailbag each week. And I would love the opportunity to feature you. That's listen at a kids podcast about dot com or on social media using hashtag AKBA summer. Have a great day at camp, everyone. All right, campers, after this break, we're going to get ready for some story time with Counselor Ben and you won't want to miss it. Hi, my name is Jonah, and I want to tell you about a Kids Class About, an all-new streaming platform for kids and teens. I took the class on Discovering Your Passion with teacher Kevin Carroll, and it was amazing and inspiring. I can't wait to check out more classes. There are even classes focused on careers, classes on life skills, and classes on big ideas. And if you're a kid or a teen, I think you're going to love them. Visit akidsco.com and sign up for a free 14-day trial. There are a lot of facts we learn every day. Did you know that pigeons are the only bird to feed their chicks milk? Did you know that potatoes can grow on Mars? And did you know um, a monarch butterfly is poisonous? And did you know a snail has more than a thousand teeth? And did you know a dragonfly actually eats? Like, you know, the flies, if you hate them, they're just flying around and you hate them. They'll just actually eat them. They eat little bugs. Dragonflies eat little bugs? Yeah. Nice. But those facts lead us to a much bigger question. How do we know what we think is true is actually true? Hi, friends. I'm Ariane Nettles. I'm a journalist, a college professor, and host of Is That True? It's a kids podcast about facts. Each week, we go on a fact-checking investigation with experts and enthusiasts 
Because when you have evidence to support your knowledge, what you know becomes even stronger. Even cooler, you are a key part of this show. We need you to make it happen. We need your facts. Maybe it's something you know about science or sports, animals or world records, history or space. There's no limit to what we can learn about. New episodes of Is That True? release every Wednesday wherever podcasts are found. This is Ariane, and I can't wait to investigate with you. We're back for story time. Are you excited? Me too. Story time is one of my very favorite parts of camp. Let's do our stretches before we get comfy. Reach up your arms as high as they go. Stretch out your hands and feet like a big star. And do three giant jumping jacks. Ugh. All right. Let's get ready for story time. Right now is the perfect time to turn up the volume so you can hear the show just right. Good? Now, in a moment, I want you to pause the episode and move to your favorite comfortable listening spot. Maybe your listening spot this week is in your car, or on a blanket in your backyard, or in a nice cushy chair. Wherever you go, let's settle in and get cozy. Just unpause when you're ready, okay? Ready, set, go. Are you there? Great! Are you ready, Counselor Ben? Ari, thank you, and yes, I think I'm ready. I told you campers last week that Counselor Ben is pretty much always ready for story time. It has been true my whole life, but I do have to tell you, this week's story, which is called The Fox River Raft is filled with danger. So hang on tight. <laughs> this is a story about determination, about not giving up and always seeing your project through, but also being determined to stay alive. You got to be determined for both. <laughs> so pay attention because there's a big twist at the end. It's a story about a raft that my good friend Eric Fitzpatrick and I once built. And it starts back when I was nine years old, and we were living in that little gray house I told you about last week, right across West Chestnut Street from the wide, shiny, slow-moving river called the Fox River in Burlington, Wisconsin. Now, the Fox River is not bubbly and rough like those mountain rivers. It flows flat and smooth like a mirror kind of sliding by. Imagine green-headed ducks and Canadian geese, sometimes even swans floating on the river, cattails and orange tiger lilies on the shore, turtles sunning themselves on logs during the summer sun days, and they would keep warm. And there were water snakes too, but I can't tell about those right now because I've got a totally different story about that, which I promise I'll tell you uh, during the camp sometime soon. But across from my house, way out in the river, sat a small green island, and we called it the Secret Island. And even though all of the neighborhood kids would play by the river and we skipped stones and we fished and we had all kinds of adventures, there was no kid, and I mean not one single kid, that had ever been out to the Secret Island. Not one that we knew about, anyway. It was way too far to swim to, and even slow-moving rivers have a big channel somewhere in them, and the channel for the Fox River went right in between the island and where we lived, so it was dangerous to swim to. The channel is where the river is deeper and flowing faster. We would hear stories at school about high school kids who went to the island and disappeared and never came back. We never knew if those stories were totally true, but it sure seemed true as kids, and it was scary. My dad told me, that a tribe of Native Americans called the Potawatomi once lived out on the island. And so I wondered if maybe we would find treasures or arrowheads or old Native American tools. The Potawatomi were a wonderful group of Native Americans. Those are the people who lived in the land before English settlers came in. And they used to teach their children 
with a story about a water spider. And the thing that they were always teaching their children was called the Seven Grandfather Teachings. And I can't tell you the whole story. It's a really cool story about a water spider who weaves together a raft out of her own spider web and travels on a great adventure to get a coal and she can bring it back to warm all of the animals through the Wisconsin winter. Okay. And they used that story to teach about the seven grandfather teachings. And here are the seven main teachings of the Potawatomi who once lived in the land now called Burlington, Wisconsin. They taught these seven things, wisdom, respect, love, honesty, humility, bravery, and truth, being truthful with each other and good toward all animals and plants and other life and creation. And the Potawatomi, they really believed in the equality of each person in their tribe, and they totally loved nature and respected it. So this was a really cool place to live and to learn from this group of people who once lived there before. So as children, we had all kinds of ideas about what it was like living in that area and so forth, and what kinds of cool things might we find if we made it out to the secret island. Oh, my goodness. Well, there we were. One day, very hot summer day, and my best friend, Eric Fitzpatrick, we were fishing in the Fox River, but as was often the case, we were not catching many fish, and he was sitting there just staring constantly forward, looking out at the secret island. Well, what are you looking at, I asked him. Why do you keep staring over at that? Dude, he said, there's got to be a way to get out to that island. And his eyes were locked on it, perfectly still. I said, yes, there has to be a way. And so from that moment, we started thinking and talking and making a plan. This Eric, oh my goodness, he was one of the friendliest kids you would ever meet. And he was smart. And he and I had many adventures, but this one was one of the best. So we decided we're going to build a raft. And we had to make it big enough for both of us. Plus, we figured to get all the way out to that island and back home would easily take the whole day. So we would have to bring supplies and hot dogs, and we would probably have to build a fire once we were out to the island, if we made it. The next thing we had to do is probably the most important part of this whole story. My mom made us promise to be safe, and we promised to keep our life jackets on while we were on the raft. And that was a great promise to make, because I think it might have saved our lives in the end. Dun, dun, dun. (laughs) Oh, man. Okay, well, we'll come to that later. Eric and I were so excited. I mean, this plan was awesome. First, we had to build the raft, though. And we figured that shouldn't be too hard. We had seen pictures of rafts in the books we had read, books like Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. So it looked like all you need is a stack of logs right next to each other, and then you can even build a tent on top of that and float down the Mississippi. Well, guess what? When you're nine years old, trying to find very large logs and move them from the woods across the street down to the river, (laughs) it took us an entire day just to move one log. And when we got it into the water, guess what? It barely even floated. We were either using the wrong kind or there was something we didn't know about floating logs. But if you just put your foot on it, it sunk right down to the bottom. I quit, I yelled. This is dumb. I don't want to do this. We were all dirty and sweaty from working all day, and it didn't float. I was very discouraged. And I wonder if you could relate to that at all, campers, if you've ever had a moment where you were really hoping something would work out, but then it didn't work out at all, and you just wanted to quit. Yeah, I've felt it too. But my friend Eric was very determined. And he said, let's think about a different way to do this. He said, let's find something else that floats instead of these logs because they were just too big and too hard to move. Lots of things float, he said, not just logs. And he was right. So now I felt totally energized again. His good determination had filled me with good courage. And we said, I know how styrofoam floats. We had all seen styrofoam float before. So next thing you know, we're riding our bikes all around the town, picking up every piece of styrofoam we can find. 
and we tied it all up in a big, huge, you might think of it like a bag made of a tarp. Then we built a wooden platform on top of that. We hauled this whole thing down to the river, and guess what? It totally worked. Our raft floated. His determination was so good. I was so excited. We pushed off from the shore. It was a little bit wobbly, but we were doing great. And then our big, huge tarp bag that all the styrofoam chunks were in ripped open. And then the styrofoam chunks fell out and started floating down the river, which meant our raft started sinking. And we splashed and we pushed and we barely made it back to shore. And then the whole rest of the day, we had to pick up styrofoam on the side of the Fox River. Oh, my goodness, I wanted to give up. Eric, however, was ready to continue. What does this mean? What would we say about Eric? He was filled with determination. He did not want to quit. And then he came up with the best idea of all, inner tubes. Old car tires have these big, thick, black rubber inner tubes that's big enough for people to float in. We would float around on them on the river, and my dad had three of them in the backyard shed. So we filled them up with air, and we knew this plan was going to work. We used our wooden platform, and we tied the inner tubes to the bottom, and it floated Oh my goodness, we were so excited. And then the day came. We had all of our stuff together, our supplies and our adventure snacks. We had burned our names with a magnifying glass. We wood burned our names into the wood of the raft. And then Eric had a long wooden pole that he could stick into the river bottom and push us forward. And I had a canoe paddle that my dad let me borrow. And he said, do not lose that paddle. That's my good paddle. And I said, I won't, Dad, I won't lose it. And there we were. Eric pushed off with the pole, and our raft was a little bit creaky and a little bit wobbly, and there was a little water splashing up on it, but we were floating. And we were pushing and paddling like Lewis and Clark or Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. We were true adventurers. And we pushed and paddled, and we got sunburned and sweaty. The river current was stronger than we expected. But we crossed over the channel, And our exhausted arms kept pushing and heaving and hoeing. Good thing we had plenty of water and adventure snacks. Finally, we landed on the shore of the secret island, and it was like another world. The flowers were brighter. The butterflies were faster. They were more fluttery. (laughs) Eric jumped into the woods, and I followed after him. Tall, mysterious trees were above us, and we discovered an old campsite with a stone fire ring already built. So that's where we had a small campfire, and we roasted our hot dogs for lunch. And I tell you what, they were the best-tasting hot dog I have ever had in my—even still today. There was just something wonderful about that island. Eric looked over at me, and he said, I sure am glad we didn't give up on the raft. This is awesome. And I agreed. We had been determined to build that raft and to make it to the island, and there we were. And that kind of strong determination was very good. And right here, at this part of the story, I almost want to tell you that you should never, ever give up. Or maybe I could say something like, you should always keep trying no matter what. But that's not how this story goes. Good determination helps you live and experience great adventure. Bad determination can get you killed. And here's what happened next. The sun started to go down, and we knew that we were going to be late getting home. So we shoved off from the shore, and we started pushing and paddling as hard as we could, like we had been before, but now our arms were way more tired, and the river current swept us away downriver. Every river has that main channel I was telling you about, and our big clunky raft got caught in the main channel. Now we were floating quickly down the Fox River, and we passed right by my little gray house, and we were calling out for help. Help! Help! But nobody could hear us. We were too far out. And then we saw the train bridge coming up. Our raft would surely float right under it. Oh, no, Eric screamed out, the waterfall. And he was totally right. 
The faster we floated in the main current, the closer we got to the train bridge, and then after that, we knew the river would flow into the Echo Park Lake. And there was a huge dam there with a giant waterfall. I don't know for sure how big it was, but to us kids, it was the greatest waterfall in the world. <laughs> That's what it seemed like. So our hearts were pounding. I was paddling so hard, my hands got slippery and there were blisters on my fingers and they were wet and my dad's paddle slipped out from my hands. Oh no, I yelled out. That was the one I'm not supposed to lose. And then Eric looked over at me and lost his own pushing pole because it was stuck in the river mud. And now we had no paddle and no way to steer our raft and the waterfall was getting closer and we were getting terrified. We need to jump, I told Eric, but he was determined as usual to never give up. No, he said, we'll lose our raft. Everything we built, we can't give up. I said, but if we don't swim for it, we're going to die. We got to jump. Finally, he agreed. He said, we got to swim for it. And so I want to just say right here, determination is so good and it is almost always good, but we have to always be determined to survive <laughs> and determined to stay smart. That's a good adventurer. It's not about being foolish. It's about being smart and staying alive. So just before we came to the train bridge, we squeezed our life jackets tight and we jumped in <laughs> into the river, the muddy river water. And we swam our hearts out until we made it to shore and we crawled up onto the dry land and we fell onto our backs and we gasped for air. <sighs> Oh, and we made it and we were okay. But our raft was not okay. Under the train bridge it floated, helplessly disappearing around the corner. And we knew that once it reached the Echo Park Dam, our raft would be destroyed. Eric and I were bummed. I think I had tears in my eyes. I was crying. It hurt so bad to let it go. And when we got home, we were all muddy and tired. And I told my dad the story. And he took us in his rusty old red pickup truck down to the river to pick up those pieces of heartbroken raft. You can't leave that kind of stuff in the river ever, you know. We had to go pick it up. And we did. And dad was not happy that I lost his good wooden paddle. But he was very happy that I was still alive. Pretty soon all the kids in the neighborhood were talking about Eric and Ben, the great raft builders and adventurers. I think we might have been the first kids in history to explore the secret island of Burlington's Fox River and live to tell about it. It's hard to say for sure, but I think that could be true. <laughs> Eric's determination was so good. I love that guy. He was my best friend. And I think that we were courageous that day. But maybe the bravest thing that we did was jumping off that raft and swimming for shore when we had to do it. It was quite an adventure. And I have to say to you, thank you for being with me for story time and for listening to the Fox River Raft. This has been a wonderful time. And thanks for doing this camp with me here at Camp Adventure. I genuinely love this. And just like last week, when I gave you at the end our weekly challenge, today... I've got another sweet weekly challenge for you. And I'll tell you, it requires water, and there's going to be some floating involved. All right. And I'll tell you more in just a moment. All right. So hang on. All right, campers. It is time for this weekly challenge, and I'm pretty stoked to see what you create. This week's challenge is kind of like an art project, plus a building project, plus a floating project. I think it will be pretty fun. So here is what I want you to do this week. This is going to be difficult, but if you stay determined to finish the project, I'm confident that you can do this. So I want you to build some kind of raft that floats on real water. And I want your raft to be able to hold at least one passenger of some kind. Okay? <laughs> That's the challenge. So the first thing you've got to do is this. You've got to find a stuffed animal or maybe a Lego minifig 
or some kind of doll or an action figure or one of your toys that you want to take on a rafting adventure, maybe a dinosaur, or a car, or a truck, whatever you want to try to float, anything. And then make sure it's something that's okay to get wet, okay? <laughs> that your grown-ups are like, yeah, that's okay if you want to try to float that. You probably got to ask them first, kind of like we did in my store. You know, you got to make sure your plans are okay with them. All right. And you could also see if they want to participate too. Say, why don't you make your own raft and then I'll make one too. And maybe everybody in your cabin can do the same thing. So first you got to find something cool that can be a passenger on your raft. Then you've got to find stuff that floats. I don't recommend giant, huge logs that take all day to move down to the river, <laughs> okay? But you can find a small wooden board, maybe, or a chunk of styrofoam. Get creative. Balloons can float. Empty plastic bottles can float. Sometimes Tupperwares from the kitchen with their lids on tight. Think about anything you can find that floats. Finally, and this is kind of the hard part, you've got to put the things that are floaty together somehow. You've got to connect the bottles or put the chunks of styrofoam together. Somehow you have to figure that out and put it together into a raft. You maybe use tape or string. You could use glue or anything you can find to make this raft stick together. Now, once you have it all built, you've got to find some water. Think about a bathtub or a bathroom sink or maybe the kitchen sink or maybe you've got a kiddie pool in the backyard or a little pond at your neighborhood or a river. The big thing here, kids, is don't litter. Don't leave stuff floating down the river. Remember, Eric and I went and we got all the stuff that we put in the river back out of it. So make sure you do that too, okay? That's like living like the Potawatomi. Good with the land, yeah? Being respectful of the nature. So remember, you can build your rafts as a team with your brothers or sisters or friends or grown-ups. Anybody who's at Camp Adventure with you this summer, or you can make a raft all by yourself. And if you each build a raft, you can challenge yourself to see whose raft can hold the most passengers, or maybe whose raft can stay floating the longest, or whose can travel along the water from one side to the other the fastest. Even if you think about it, you can challenge yourself on any one of those things too. You don't even need to worry if you don't have a partner. But make sure that you send us a video or a picture of your raft floating and you can make it any way that you want. I can't wait to see what you build. Tell me the story about how you put it together. I'd love to, uh, to share these with the other campers in these next couple of weeks mailbag if we can. Most of all, like we said last week, and I'm going to remind you every single week, the weekly challenge is meant to be tons of fun. That's the goal every time. Don't hurry. Don't worry about making it perfect or anything like that. Just create and build and experiment and have fun. Cool? I can't wait to see what you build. I can't wait to see what you float. And I'm already looking forward to seeing you again next week. Be safe. Stay determined this week. Have fun. And I will see all of you campers again very soon. Thanks, Ben. And thank you campers for joining us at Camp Adventure this week. We'd love to feature you and your fellow campers on our next episode. Share your camp flags from last week and share your Camp Adventure rafts for this week on social media using the hashtag AKBA Summer or write to us at listen at a kids podcast about dot com. Camp Adventure is written by Ben Tertine with help from the A Kids Podcast About team. Original music is by Hannah Glaver. Check out Hannah's albums at hannahglaver.bandcamp.com. This show is edited and produced by Matthew Winner with help from me, Ari Mathay. Audio production is by Chad Michael Snavely and the team at Sound On Studios. Our executive producer is Jelani Memory. And this show was brought to you by a kid's podcast about. Listen to other podcasts made for kids just like you by visiting akidsbookabout.com. While you're there, be sure to check out Ben's book, A Kid's Book About Adventure. See you back at camp next week.
Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcast at a kid's company about. We hope you enjoyed this show, and we'd love for you to check out our growing library of shows at a kid's podcast about. Whether you're looking for storytelling with crafts and activities, fact-finding with experts and enthusiasts, or looking to explore and understand your world better, we have got a podcast for you. Check out the A Kids Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. Music